This is the Guns Magazine podcast, quick hit episode number 48. Hi there, and welcome to another quick hit episode of the Guns Magazine podcast. I'm your host and the editor of Guns Magazine, Brent Wheat. Thanks for joining us as we talk to the interesting people who make up the world of shooting, hunting, and the firearms industry. Today's episode is another gathering of our resident gun cranks, myself, Roy Huntington, and American Handgunner editor, Tom McHale, as we have a lively discussion on the calibers we love, the calibers we hate, and the calibers we love to hate. However, before we get started, I would like to remind you this episode of the Guns Magazine podcast is sponsored by our friends at Kimber. Kimber was founded with the singular purpose of making every firearm the best it can possibly be with a fit and finish that only practiced hands can achieve and appreciate. Whether you carry a Kimber for personal protection, hunting, or competition, know that their promise of quality without compromise is how they measure success. To learn more about Kimber firearms, visit KimberAmerica.com. Today's episode was actually inspired by decades of reader questions asking us, what's your favorite calibers and why? So, today we answer some of those questions, talking about everything from the 22 long rifle to the 470 Nitro Express. Among other things, you're going to find out about Roy's disdain for the 300 Blackout and the fact that Tom McHale has actually reloaded 22 long rifle cartridges and lived to tell the tale. Now, here's our Guns Magazine podcast quick hit episode on our favorite calibers. Well, today we're going to talk about calibers we hate and love to hate and the calibers and ammunition we hate to love. And I'm, I'm going to start out, you know, I like the 45 Long Colt, and, but I really like the 470 <laughs> Nitro Express, you know? I, I've smoked cigars that are that smaller than that. <laughs> yeah, exactly. But it's a great round. I mean, they're only $25 a piece, but you know, for uh, varmint hunting, especially, uh, there's no cleanup afterwards because they explode. And then if you run across an elephant, it's fantastic. But no, I, I asked uh, our friends at uh, Federal to get me a crazy cartridge that I could use for photo illustrations at times. And they were kind enough to send me a box of Federal Premium Safari 470 Nitro. So Someday nice. I hope to shoot a couple of those at a large, angry mammal. Now, so, yeah, up, do you have a rifle that, that carries that <laughs> oh, at this moment? No, absolutely not. <laughs> You'll be able to sell that box of ammo and retire someday, though. So, Yeah, yeah exactly. Who, this was your idea, I think, Roy. So walk us down. What, what is it you love or hate to love or love to hate? Well, some of this comes from uh, 20 years of reader email. And, and letters because, you know, we'll do a cover feature on a 1911 and it'll be in 45 ACP. And then the, invariably that will generate some reader mail saying, you know, you guys always write about the 45 ACP and I think it's useless because I think the nine millimeter is better or the 357 SIG or the, you know, 30 miles or whatever it is. And over the years, it just, it struck me that there is just something about some calibers and it just gets right underneath people's skin they just hate it it's like sticking bamboo in their fingernails you know and uh one of those which is my i hate it and i love it but i love to hate it and i love it is the watch yourself i know but it's the 32 acp and (laughs) apparently readers the same way because it when we run an article about 32 anything just about Everybody loves the 327 Federal or the 32 H&R Magnum, it seems. But the 32 ACP is you're either for it or you're against it. That's just the way it is. And generally, if we run an article about it, then we're flooded with email from people saying, I just love the 32 ACP and I have a Walter and I have a, the 1903 Colt and I love it and it's my favorite gun and I love it. And then the other side, of course, is the we're all going to die. The world's going to end. I can't believe you're promoting something as dangerous as that. You know, you're going to tempt someone into believing that it's, you know, that it's okay to use. And so, but that's exactly my problem with it is that I know objectively that I should not carry a 32 ACP for personal protection. But then again, and Tom, I know you have a a 1903 Colt. 
I'll stumble onto my 1903 Colt in 32 ACP, and they're just so compellingly beautiful, fun, historic. And fun, yeah. Yeah, John Browning, magic, all that kind of stuff that you think, well, you know, I'm, I'm just going to go out on the property here, and so I'll probably be okay. And it's that probably be okay, and then it's like I go, wait, don't, don't, you're doing it, don't, don't, don't. So... <laughs> I mean, every time I shoot one, I wrote my next insiders on the 1903 and the 1908 in 380. So you'll be seeing some of my feelings about it. But I shot it and you just go, that's fun. I, yeah. I love to do that. You know, there's no recoil and it's just fun. Other than you have to bend down, pick up the brass and when you're old and that's hard <laughs> to do. But then uh, yep. just, but any other reason than that, it's, I hate it. I'm kind of in the same boat. I'm kind of both, you know, I, I love to shoot it. And yeah, the 1903 is fantastic, but I also have a, a Walther Emanuel model, uh, Walther PPK, PP, uh, Walther PP actually. And, uh, that he said is, PP. Or, yeah. PP, I did. <laughs> um, that is fantastic to shoot. I mean, it's a tack driver. It's just an elegant little gun, but, but I don't, I don't carry 32 or I don't, like to um as elegant as it is but what i do hate about the 32 is reloading it it's oh there's no reason it should be hard but it is getting getting you know bullets to stick in the case properly with the right tension is a bear you know i don't know if it's just a a dimensional thing people don't pay attention to consistent dimensions on 32 brass and bullet i don't know but it's it's a pain in the neck to reload so you know we should add the 25 acp to this because the only thing about it is that i to me it's not actually a cartridge it's just it's like this little toy <laughs> that we have you know that some people play with i suppose there was a moment of insanity when a reader dared me to reload the 25 acp so i could try oh, wow. to, for more stopping power you know, yeah, and boy, I'll tell you, if you think the 32 is hard, wait till you try to fumble finger your way through putting those little teeny tiny yeah. bullets in those little, tiny, yeah, and like well, a half a grain of you know, unique or it was just the <laughs> stupidest thing I ever did in my life. So, yeah, what, what so size primer are those? The uh, the toy primers, the they use <laughs> yeah. caps from the, the cap pistol for caps, mini, mini, <laughs> like yeah, the rolls, you just tear one caps. off the roll, remember those, tape it on the bottom. The you stick them on yeah. the bottom, you know, and yeah. Oh yeah, absolutely. Well, I, you know, you're sitting here, I've got a bunch of rifle rounds surrounding me, but I do have one single pistol cartridge. And before I, I say that one, it's the one I love. I honestly, I really don't even think about the 25 or the 32 because they just don't exist in my world uh, to my thinking. But you know, all the rest of them, I like them all. They're fine for what they are. But the one I just love is the 45 Colt. Uh. And there's a lot of reasons why it's not the most effective. It's this, that, it's the other. But you know what? You fire them out of single actions. And what is cooler than that? Tell me, I don't care who you are, what age you are, when you're down at the range or you're out hunting or plinking and you're shooting a single action, there's a moment where you're Clint Eastwood and, and you know, the train to Yuma or John Wayne, uh, telling dog to, you know, eat the guys that are going to hang the Scottish sheep herder. I mean, come on, the 45 Colt, right? <laughs> he just so. got back from gun sight, so he shot his single action guns, and so he's got the sickness now, you could tell. Yep. Yeah, <laughs> it's good. You'll never get over it, by the way. Yeah. Oh, I don't, I don't want to. That's fine, you know? But it, so none you know, of it counts my... unless you have a Colt single action army, not a clone, not a Ruger. May the Ruger gods be blessed. But until you have a four and three quarter inch single action Colt or a seven and a half inch, you know, cavalry model, then come back. Let's have another gun crank. Uh, okay. <laughs> Fair enough. Fair enough. Can we do heresy on this show? Yeah. Yeah. I don't like the 40 Smith and Wesson. I just don't. <laughs> really? It's, I have no problems with its performance. It does. I'm not, I'm not a slow and weak guy or, a, you know, one of those people <laughs> jump on that bandwagon. Um, but, you know, it's, I just don't like it. I'm kind of like, if I want capacity and, you know, low recoil, give me a nine. If I want a big bullet, give me a 45. I don't, I don't, I know you can get a couple more rounds in a full size gun, but. That's a good point. Why? I had completely. I find it snappier it. than a 45 anyway. So if you're really looking yeah. to yeah. 
to control and run your gun. I, I can run a 45 better than I can a 40. Yeah. I, well, you know, when it came out, oh, wait, can you top right. this? The 45 gap. <laughs> oh, yeah. That didn't last very long, did it? No. No. It was all the but rage was, for a year or so. It was like that. It, is that I think when the 40 came out, and I think we all know the story, right? Okay, 10 millimeter, it kicked too much. The FBI said yeah. something else. Smith & Wesson said Tommy Campbell was behind it. It was wonderful. Perfect. Answered the question. They sold millions of rounds of ammunition and guns. But even at the time, I remember thinking, um, why are we doing this again? You know? And then every yeah. police agency in the entire country had to sell all of their guns and buy 40s, you know, and yeah. it's like, we did. Huge, yeah, everybody did. Well, almost everybody. And then now yeah. what are they doing? Anyone, anyone, what are they doing now? The wonder going, nine. Yeah. Yep. They're going back to the, the wonder. Although nine. they've got it all wrong because this is, this is the bomb right here. Is that three? You guys recognize this guy? The SIG. Yeah, 357 SIG. I'm a weird caliber guy, and I'll, I'll confess that right up front. So Just a is, weird guy. This is in my favorites, and I'm not sure I can actually justify a lot of good reasons why. I mean, it's loud. It's got a lot of flash. It's, it's definitely snappier than a 9, but I don't think it's any snappier than a 40. Um, you know, lighter bullets, so yeah. a little less, little less momentum there in the recoil. But um, I love these. They're just fun, and they, they feed like all get out. I mean, you can two-finger – a gun like this, the 357 SIG, well, that bottle nose, it's, it just feeds every time. And they're kind of a pain and finicky to reload, but I like that. So, There's a lot to be said for that bottle nose case feeding thing. You know, yeah. the yeah. old 30 Mauser is like that too. Uh, yeah. I mean, just, I've got an old broom handle Mauser that you just, I mean, it looks like you ran over it and the dog buried it and, you know, and then it went through a grinder or something. Yeah. And, damn if the thing just runs like a top it has no reason to shoot good but it you know oh it has no rifling left in it too so but it yeah. it just it feeds those bottleneck cartridges you know i'm still yeah. kind of itching for a 1911 and 357 sig you know they're they're getting harder to find now there was a little a little spike in interest a couple years ago i know um you know sig was making what was it a nightmare i think um 1911 platform for this but they're they're getting tough to find. Did they do? Yeah. Did that, they make one? I honestly did. didn't know yeah. that. Yeah, they I don't think it. it was huge quantity, but they they did make one. You can still find them on the market. I don't think it's current production though. Well, well I was going to say track one down. Yeah, I know. Well, we've talked about handgun cartridges, and you know, again, my personal feeling is they're kind of utilitarian. I get all warm and fuzzy about rifles, and I've got all this rifle ammunition, and I, I have to say. My favorite, I would have to nominate the 308 because uh, my background as a police sniper, you know, you pretty much had to memorize the ballistics of the 308, 168 grain boat tail hollow point. And there are other cartridges that do different things better now. But when I was just talking to somebody the other day, they said, I, I, I want to buy a rifle kind of all purpose for everything. And I said, well, there's no such thing. But I got to say the 308 is pretty close to that. Uh, if mm -hmm. you do your job, it'll do your job. I've taken elk at 402 yards with the 308 and it was one step and down. So um, I wouldn't necessarily advocate that for everybody, but it's uh, a great anti-personnel round. The ballistics are known. It's easy to reload. Uh, it's very effective on game up to elk size. I like the 308. I get warm and fuzzy. Well, well if you're a reloader, you got a wide variety of projectiles available to you. Yep. Like but it. I hate it. <laughs> of course you do. <laughs> Just because he likes it? Or no. I, you actually have a reason. Actually, I agree with you 100%. But what I don't like about it <laughs> is when you load it with 200 grain bullets. I, yeah. I've got some old Winchester silver tip 200 grain 308 mm. bullets. And I'll tell you what, it'll kick you in the next week. <laughs> you know, just because yeah. usually what's, what's another virtue of 308s is it's a short action. So you have it in light rifles, you right. know, my 308s are all these little short, lightweight guns, you know, a pleasure to carry. I kind of favor the 150 ish kind of ammo, mm -hmm. you know, something a little lighter. Mm -hmm. And so just not very long ago, I'd stumbled onto two or three boxes of these 200 grain bullets. And I thought, Oh, I'm going to take those outside and shoot them. And it was like one shot later I went, okay, I'm not going to shoot any more of these today. <laughs> That's why you still have boxes of them sitting around. Yeah. It's like, <laughs> Holy cow. And why do we That's have, why I got boxes of this sitting around 50 AE. 
Cause I know we're on <laughs> rifles and the, the only reason I pulled this out is this, this probably should be a carbine cartridge. It's kind of fun and nifty in that yeah. platform and a rifle platform. Not, not really what is fun in a handgun platform for one shot, maybe two, you know, <laughs> oh, you the, the giant even... fireball and, you know, yeah. concussion and sonic boom and all that stuff. And, and then it, then it hurts. I, you know, I have a I have a Desert Eagle though in fifty A, and I I don't know if you if you've ever shot one. I have to say it's yeah. it's it's pretty mild. You know, you're we more had, of a man uh, than I am. Then, if I, well, we had we had the PDC <laughs> team here at my house uh, a few years ago when we were doing our masters here in Kansas, and they was somebody said, "Hey, we want to shoot some guns on your patio," and I said, "Okay." So I went downstairs. I got the fifty A Desert Eagle and a couple boxes of ammo. Of course, they were all scared to death, but Everybody shot it. Everybody, you know, including yeah. two like little skinny girls that we had there helping out or something. Yeah. They shot it and they enjoyed well, you, it. So, you Tom, you may it, be just a wuss when it comes to that. So. Well, I, I sold mine because it's not one I just want to take out and shoot a lot. You know, it's yeah. it's fun. It's a novelty now and then. But, um, eh. <laughs> well, moving along to my next rifle cartridge, since they always want to talk about pistol cartridges. <laughs> this This is old school right here. The 270. If it's good enough for Jack O'Connor, it's good enough for me. So I've actually not hunted as much with the 270, but I think it's one of the most versatile. And again, the track record of it, uh, you know, a lot of elk have fallen to this thing, bears. Um, it's just a nice all round round. I think it was really ahead of its time back in the day. And now it's being eclipsed by, again, other things. But, mm -hmm. you know, it's hard to go wrong with a 270. And the nice thing is, I don't think the uh, value on the, the used guns is held up as much because everybody wants a, a Creed more or a PRC right. or something like that. So, there is nothing wrong with the 270, and I highly recommend it. I like it. it gives me warm. Okay. Pieces. Well, you know, Sam <laughs> Fadala, who writes for us, is a, a professional hunter, licensed professional hunter in Africa. And 270 reminded me of the 30 out 6, and you talking about mm -hmm. the 308. And Sam has hunted through a special dispensation, which he, he got. He's hunted Cape Buffalo with a 30 out 6. Uh, he uses a 220 grain solid. How, how do you top that? <laughs> I mean, you know, yeah. and I think, you know, that 308, 270, 30 out six, I know readers don't like to hear that because I'm sure you guys have done this. They ask, they say, Hey, I'm thinking of getting a new deer rifle. And I always say, well, what do you have now? And they say, Oh, I have a Remington 700 and 308. And I always go, well, that's fine. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, they don't yeah, want to yeah. hear that. <laughs> yeah. yeah. We want new, we want new. And the manufacturers of course want to sell you new, but yeah, it's just like that. I need a new deer rifle. What if you took half the money we're going to spend on the new deer rifle and buy ammunition and get really good, maybe upgrade your optic. If you don't have a, you know, a yeah. higher end optic and you know, maybe a little work on the gun, you know, Timney trigger, bet it, do something with it. And you're going to have a gun that, you know, probably shoots better than you can. And uh, it's like an extension of you. So I, I shouldn't say that as an editor, right? It'd be, yes, go ahead. But it's buy. not new. <laughs> it's not new. Exactly. <laughs> Which brings us to, I don't have one in uh, front of me, but the 6.5 Creedmoor. Oh, here we go. Okay. I'm sorry. You go ahead. I'll be over here having a drink yeah, or something. Just, Let's, I no, Brent, we can, we can gang up on him on this. Okay. I like that. I like it. You like it, right? Yeah, I love it. I, I this is hold a him up in his face. My 55, which is senior to your 6.5 Creedmoor. And so old and decrepit, is that what you're saying? Seasoned and experienced would be a good <laughs> word for it. I, I mean, I understand nobody goes into a manufacturer's booth at the shot show and says, Hey, what do you have old? Okay. Mm -hmm. Even though maybe they should. And, and, and there's no reason not to focus on improving 30 out six loads or 270 loads or 308 loads or the yeah. technology. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's new powders and new primers and new bullet technology. And so all of those old cartridges still keep getting reinvented. Just look at the 1911 and what happens there, right? And, and all this mm -hmm. ammunition. But, I mean, I understand, but for some reason, it's like if you already have a 6.5 by 55 or, or something, or 243 or something similar, it's like you really don't need <laughs> to upgrade. We're not talking about need. Here. I realize. I'm, yeah. You know, <laughs> you know. I got it. But I, I, I guess, Brent, where you, you were talking about a second ago where it was like somebody will get a half a percent or 1% more stopping power. 
And so yeah. now they have to sell three thousand dollars worth of rifle and reloading gear. You know, to get the what was that cartridge you said? It was the what? The six point oh the six six five PRC. Yeah. It's PRC. different than the Creedmoor, and it does do it a little better B C and all that, but how much more more how much more better, you know? So <laughs> yeah. and and the funny thing that we kind of hit on, but Honestly, having we've all been instructors, we've all shot a lot, and honestly, I would say most guns shoot better than the people behind them. So I hate to say that, but it's true. So you know, at the highest levels, whether you're talking a pistol competitor, a rifled long distance shooter, or whatever, having good equipment does make that last tiny percentage where you know a Robbie Latham uh, needs the best gear he can get so he can beat Jerry Michelik, but you or I using that same gear, it wouldn't make any difference at all. So I just always go back to buy some bullets and shoot. 300 blackout. Yes. Thank you. <laughs> Love or hate. I almost grabbed ah, one. Favorite ah. MSR round right there. Again, I weird guess number. so. Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> the thing that I, somebody handed me an AR platform that was 300 blackout with a suppressor. One time yeah. I'd never fired it. I'd seen it, heard about it, all that kind of stuff. And uh, so I took a shot at a hundred yards and of course you, it, it goes clack, clack. You know, yeah. you don't hear anything cause it's subsonic. And, but I, I vividly remember watching the cartridge arc, <laughs> you know, <laughs> on its way down, <laughs> you know, wow. it like went way up and then way. And then I heard the, yeah. And then I heard the like tick of it hitting the paper, the cardboard on the yep. target. And I thought, well, that was kind of fun. You know, I mean, yeah. I don't really know what I would ever need it for unless I was taking out sentries or something, you know. <laughs> and so I understand that there's a need. Yeah. But what, what I find amusing about it is that people take it and load it up. So they go, I have a 300 blackout, and now they're loading it at 2,400 feet per second or something like that. It's like, why are we doing this? <laughs> you know, it's like, that's not what it's for boys and girls. I don't know. Am I uh, missing something? I'm not sure I agree with that. I think, you know, terminal ballistics on the, the 30 caliber. I mean, you open up a lot of, a lot of possibilities over two, two, three, five, five, six. I mean, this is the, the 110 grain barn tack barns, tack TX bullet in here. And this sucker will absolutely expand reliably, you know, with At those what ranges. Velocity, it's a nice, like what velocities are, are they, uh, these I love these to about twenty five hundred, give or take. Okay, out of a rifle, you know, so it's a, like a pistol. It's, they'll be a little slower, but um, so it's like a three oh eight, <laughs> kind of. You know, yeah. But well, in know, standard but platform, the, we have to give yeah. uh, J D Jones at SSK Industries credit because he actually really did invent all that stuff in the yeah. early days. He he yeah. was first, and uh, he showed me some cartridges that he made. He's he took that same concept and he's he has a whole cross section up to it including 50s and yeah. so he's got that similar subsonic where he's shooting like a i don't know like 600 grain bullet at 950 feet per second <laughs> but if wow. talk about momentum you know that thing penetrates you know two feet of you know <laughs> newspaper and stuff like that yeah. and, and hey, so, I've, I've loaded 245 grains in 300 blackout wow lead really? slugs that's kind of fun yeah. But here, well, this I'll may convert you, Roy. Mm -hmm. This one, it's your 150 grain 308 bullet loaded in 300 blackout. I use these for practice because they're dirt cheap. You can get bullets anywhere, you know, surplus, pulled bullets, anything, just for practice stuff. And at 50, 100 yards, the point of impact is difference is negligible to the 110s and 125s. So it's a so good what, cheap what do you volume use round for playing like, around. Like what, if, if someone wanted to buy one because they have a use for it, what would it mm -hmm. be? Making me giggle. Okay, so it's just a giggle round. Mm -hmm. I understand. Yeah. Well, it, it's really no, but, popular with no, the, the pig yeah. shooters. That's okay. what I used it for. Uh, yeah. We did night hunting down, uh, calling down in the Panhandle of Florida, and I'll tell you, first time we went after a sounder of thirty pigs using thermal, and we got in amongst them, and I was shaken like. The, my first prom night when it was done, we all three of us had 30 round magazines and we were lighting them up and uh, it was, it was quite a thing, but it is very uh, effective on even, you know, big giant pigs, the kind that are bigger than you are. So I was impressed. It ranges anywhere from 25 to probably 125. And uh, these the subsonics down. you were shooting. 
No, 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 no. Uh, uh, I'm supersonic. To think. Yeah, one forties maybe. I think. Okay. And uh, it it did a number, and it you know with that thirty cal launching into pork, uh, you I mean you got to punch pigs hard. And I wasn't sure, but now that I've seen it, uh, you know, in a standard AR platform, it's pretty darn effective. And that's why I've got an, a, a three hundred upper uh, simply for. Uh, next time somebody calls me for a pig hunt. So if you want an editor to come and shoot pigs on your ranch or whatever, I'm, I'm always <laughs> happy to. That's that's one of my favorite things in life, and I don't get to do it very often, but I just like shooting pigs. I did well, talk it's useful to, uh, on the smaller platforms too, on the AR pistol length or short yeah, barrel yeah. SBR platforms because you're getting a little more bang for your buck than a two two three. you know, with the heavier bullet. And That makes sense. I, I helped a young man convert or not. He built a uh, – a, it, it's a really strange, like a little bolt action AR-15 pistol. Uh, it, they they build them like on YouTube. You can see where you you can build. And when he first did it, I thought, well, that seems really silly. Why would you do the bolts on the left side? You kind of run it like that. But mm -hmm. he built it in 300 blackout, and mm -hmm. he's has a license, for, you know, for a suppressor on it. And so we we shot it in my backyard. And I have to admit, it's like holy cow, Brett. What you're saying about pigs or something. I mean, it would be a very civilized way to do that. I did talk to a department of fish and game guy in Texas who used one uh, for culling deer. And so it was a suppressed 300 blackout because he said what you said, you've got a 30 caliber round. So it's, it kills more reliably than, you know, some other gu guns that you can suppress like that. And so he had it sighted in very precisely. And then they would set up around water holes and, you know, and, and shoot like 20, you know, doe mm -hmm. wow. to call them. And it was quiet and nobody, you know, everyone just looked down and said, Fred, what's wrong? Get up. <laughs> you know? <laughs> so. Yeah. Well, you know, we've, we've covered everything from the 470. Now I got to say, is there anybody that doesn't like that one? The 22 long rifle, no. probably <laughs> every one of our, our first gun ever. Um, it just, it's a wonderful round for fun, for plinking. It takes small game reliably. There's all kinds of guns for it. Um, you can even reload the darn things, which I would never try, but some people are crazy. That You probably do, don't you, Tom? I. <laughs> oh, that hurts. <laughs> he still. did. That no, hurts. I did. Yeah, yes, I did. And in fairness, <laughs> how many I did fingers? For an article. You got all because all the fingers? I do. Somebody made a kit that, you know, you cast your own little bullets from range scrap or whatever, wheel weights or whatever you can find. And I, I did it. I was like, okay, the world the the, the theory was can you reload twenty two ammo that works with stuff you find around the garage. So I use like a steel ashtray as my melting pot, a blowtorch, <laughs> and, and ground up match heads for the primer, you know, <laughs> for the powder. That, I'm sorry, the powder. That's the house that burnt down, right? Uh, yes, it is. And uh, it, so now I'm sure it's a skill and you learn the tricks over time, but you can actually do it. And you take a spent case with a, you know, dented rim and you just dent it in another spot. Uh, but you stuff some wow. primer compound in there, a little powder, a little crushed up match heads, whatever. It was maybe, my first effort was maybe 50% reliability rate, you know. I'm sure you so it was more of a MacGyver thing not something than I would anything ever else. Do as a, as a practice, but, but it was a fun experiment. So. Or just sandbag a brick of 500 somewhere and then just, there yeah. you go. You know? Exactly. Yeah. A lifetime. Yeah, if effort. we get to the point we're doing that, things have gone seriously south. Yeah. <laughs> It's true. I wish the only thing I wish is that 22s were more reliable uh, as mechanically the ammunition. I'm always amazed whenever I've done like a thousand rounds of 22s testing, you know, you were used half a dozen or a dozen different manufacturers and but there's there's a distressing number of, you know, misfires or double hits, you know, or things like yeah. that. Uh, I got some bulk ammo from one of the main manufacturers a few years ago, and I was surprised that when I lifted it out of the tub, like virtually every round, you could you could turn the bullet in the case, and yeah, if you wow. if you kind of pulled it a little bit like that, you could actually pull the bullet out. And it's like, yeah. oh, come on, guys! I'm still flabbergasted. You you made paste out of match heads. Maybe. Is that how you did it? Maybe. Don't try this at home, kids. <laughs> no kidding. <laughs> I, I've done some dumb stuff with fireworks, but you, you've just taught me, Tom. That's pretty impressive. Yeah. 
hold my beer and watch this kind of moment. You know, it, it wasn't as, it wasn't as scary as it sounds, you know, there's some, there's some process to it, but yeah, not, not worth it is the, the net of that story. Can you do it? <laughs> yes. Should you? No, no. Oh, there, have you ever tried the um, Calibris and Super oh, Calibris from Agula? Love them. Love them. Those are fun. And for people who don't know what they are, it's uh, usually it's a little shorter 22 case with about a half weight lead projectile in it, usually 20 grains. To, they make a couple different varieties. And it's primer only, so no powder in there. So if you're shooting it from a 22 handgun. These guys are waltzing out at, you know, 350 to 450 feet per second. Um, you don't want to shoot them out of a rifle unless it's a very, you know, relatively short. I've had them stop in the barrel. Stuck in the bore. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I've had them stop in the barrel. Yeah. But they are quiet. And if you stick a suppressor on your pistol, they actually remove ambient noise from the universe. <laughs> so noise that was going on outside yeah. your house disappears. It gets sucked into a black hole created by the Calibris. So it's true. Okay. Science. Wow. And you know what? Yeah. And they're so much fun. They're a bit like the old gallery pistols because, you know, yeah. when people were civilized and, and you smoke pipes and things like that, well, if people came over to your house, you would actually set up a target like in the fireplace and shoot yeah. those little single you shot can. falling block <laughs> yep. Flobert pistols and stuff. And it was essentially those. It was like those little Calibri yeah. rounds. But you should wow. buy some. Everyone listening, if you have never done that, <laughs> Adila yeah. makes them. They're Calibris and the Super Calibris. Yeah, they which yeah, is they, what they is are it? fun. Yeah. Well, guys, any closing thoughts on the cartridges you love and the cartridges you love to hate? <sighs> There's so many. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I'll, I'll start first. I truly, I, I can't think of any I really hate. There's, I don't care for them. They're not my cup of tea or I don't see the use for them, but I got to say there's, I, whatever, you know, if you like the 243, good for you, you know, but. What about that 1895 Nagant? cartridge what's that thing called the, that might be in the hate category that's a weird one <laughs> that's just a good humor is all that the, the pistol i have one of those the hate part of that i don't know it's yeah. or the revolver yeah. it's a weird one yeah. i shot See, i'm mine. trying to be open and accepting yeah <laughs> yeah embrace, embrace, embrace. It. So I'm with you. It's like when the AR-15 owners poo-poo the trap shooters and the trap shooters say that deer hunters are stupid and all that. It's like, no, everyone just have a good time. But I yeah. think it's fun to talk about, you know, some of this kind of stuff. I, I like, I really like the 3220 uh, cartridge, you know, which is an old Westy kind of a cartridge, yeah. like the 45 Colt. And <clears throat> it's a little quirky. It's a little bit hard to reload a little bit, but I have a couple of single shot rifles and a, and a revolver. And it's just fun. It puts you in a happy place. And if this kind of stuff puts you in a happy place, then yeah. do it. Do it. Except for the 6.5 Creed more. <laughs> and with that, we hope you're enjoying the Guns Magazine podcast. Please tell all your friends, even the raging liberals. Guns Magazine is number one in the business, and we're using our decades of friendships to bring you the most interesting chats in the gun world. If you've got questions or comments, please drop me a line. That's editor at gunsmagazine.com. Make sure you don't miss out on anything by subscribing to us on your favorite podcast directory and YouTube. Of course, you can always listen and download our episodes at gunsmagazine.com. And while you're at it, don't forget to check out our sister publication, American Handgunner Magazine, at AmericanHandgunner.com. And finally, before we go, I'd like to remind you to check out our sponsor, Kimber Firearms at KimberAmerica.com. That's it for this episode of the Guns Magazine podcast. On behalf of the hardworking staff here at FMG Publications, I'm Guns Magazine editor Brent Wheat. Now get out there and get shooting. <laughs>